economists like um, Keynesians or neoclassical economists might say, oh, look, we're printing all this money and we, we're not seeing CPI increase much, although now it's, it is. Um, so that sort of explains why there's potentially, uh, it, it, uh, in a big way, inflation is also just generally making life harder. Um, it's, it's generally making us more dependent on technology, on improvement, on keeping up with the latest gadgets, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, we're, so in a big way, you know, like I, I, I don't think I don't think that can continue on. So to sort of get back to, to your question, I think you know there's there's a movement of people rejecting technology, even, uh, and it's ironic to me and inevitable that eventually, when we can be on an, a sound, you know, digital cash um, system, that's going to, to just generally make life a lot easier so this week on monero talk is sponsored by cake wallet store send receive and exchange your monero and bitcoin safely on ios and android too cake wallet is open source and you always control your own keys and by ivpn resist online surveillance with ivpn a privacy focused audited and transparent vpn provider that accepts monero directly Cake Wallet and IVPN are trusted and verified by the Monero community. Monero Talk is also made possible from contributions by viewers and listeners like you. And supporting us is easier than ever. By typing in MoneroTalk.crypto in your Cake Wallet send address field to send us a tip. This week on Monero Talk. Douglas Tuman interviews Duncan White, a Brandon candidate that is running on the Democratic Libertarian line in Australia. The two discuss his run, how he wants to make crypto legal tender, abolish capital gains tax for crypto, his thoughts on Monero, and more. Monero Talk starts now. All right, Duncan, what's going on, man? Oh, hi, Doug. Doug, thanks for having me. Um, yes, in, in short notice, I only reached out last week. So, um, yeah, really appreciate being here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tell us a little bit about yourself, and uh, honestly, I don't know much about you. I know you reached out. I know you're running. For, you're running for office in Australia uh, on what I believe is basically a, a libertarian line, but by a different name. Um, and I guess uh, you're you're interested in in cryptocurrency and digital cash. So go ahead and uh, give us the intro, and then I'll, I'll yeah, sure, okay, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, um, my name's Duncan. I'll, I'll probably just explain like. Crypto, because that's sort of what what I am involved in first. Um, three years ago, it was 2019, I first started reading into cryptocurrencies. And that really came from uh, a little bit of my blogging on, you know, sound economics. And um, and I'm sure all your listeners sort of understand that, just the the uh, how the central banks are, you know, um, destroying society in a, in a really big way, just with, with money printing and low interest rates, that sort of thing. So, um, you know, uh, in my blogging, I sort of, it was a bit grim, but uh, talked about gold and that sort of thing and and Bitcoin uh, and didn't really understand it. Um, and then sort of like, uh, it was, wasn't until 2019 that I really digged a bit deeper and realize, wow, this is quite different to gold. Like you can actually take custody of this sound money system. And, um, you know, naturally like everyone else, you sort of, you go into the Bitcoin space, BTC, and because that's just the, I, I suppose it has the name brand, hey, and just tried using it. And, it, you know, it was um, it was very interesting, but it, after a little while, it, I, I realized, oh, hang on these, it's not quite. Um, don't know how usable it is for a, you know a global money system. Um, so that's sort of that. So um, is, is that part of your your campaign? Is is it that you're? Are you running on a platform that you know in, involves cryptocurrency? Do you have cryptocurrency elements to your platform? So uh, I would say no. So. I'll, I'll just introduce like the party um liberal democrats is the name and that's really confusing especially probably yeah. to your, your american audience um 
in Australia, similar to the UK, liberal means conservative, really, or, or the right side. Uh, and Democrats is is like more left. And they combine those two really just because um, it's, it's a libertarian party. So the non-aggression principle and, you know, how that philosophy um, applies to, to, to different areas sometimes seems left, sometimes it's it's right. So that's very, sort of very the history of it. Wow, I had no idea the uh, complete different terminology. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. it's so confusing. We, we actually, we, we have a Liberal Party that's sort of that they're in power now. Mm -hmm. And so they used to be known as the Conservative Party. Um, they're very different today. And that that also confuses a lot of people here. They they sued us recently and won, so we have to change our name. So we will be doing that. I think I think they're they're wanting to make it Liberty Democrats. So oh, the Liberal Party sued the Lim Liberal Democrats for the that's name? right. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. It's been a, been a big deal. So for this election, which is okay. this Saturday, we're still the Lib Liberal Democrats, but that will probably change to liberty democrats now, yeah so i obviously know know nothing about australia um beyond beyond the obvious things um nothing about the politics down there uh only what i've recently heard about with regards to how covid was was being handled um but i didn't realize the government essentially run by conservatives yet the reaction to covid was arguably one that doesn't really align with what we consider conservative values over here. I didn't even realize that. So you want you mind explaining that a little bit more? Oh, yes. I mean, I, I think everything you said there was accurate. It's just that the conservatives here are just, they've just gone very left. Uh, it's similar to a lot of the parts of the world, but um, I think more so here, or maybe even both of those parties, they seem very similar. Um, I don't, uh, maybe... The, Lab the Labor Party here don't seem, in some ways, as extreme as the Democrats in, in America, I think. I think that's fair to say. Uh, so, yeah, but um, what was I going to say about that? So to answer your question before, we, we don't have much of a stance in cryptocurrency. Like, oh, I suppose I'm approaching it like a, if I were elected, I would want to be impartial and but when i um so, so we we've got a freedom manifesto which is lists our 10 policies to save australia a lot of it's about choice uh i mean for us aussies um a libertarian philosophy it sounds very radical so it's a fairly i would say it's a fairly conservative uh policy handbook there's there's a book but um your viewers can can read it on our website ldp.org.au slash freedom takes you straight there but there's just a small little part in that that uh, in the small business section policy six that just says we want to classify cryptocurrency as a currency and, and remove capital gains tax on it Ooh, and when i read that because I was standing, um, it, it actually took me, you know, a few weeks to to, to get around to reading the, the policy handbook. I just went, wow, that, that's that's huge. 18% um, of Aussies own crypto. Uh, and while they might not, um, you know, hold to these libertarian um, beliefs and, and that's okay, I just thought, well, that, that's quite an opportunity to reach out to the larger community, the cryptocurrency community. Uh, to, to show them what they, we're doing, and you're right. Like I, I think it, it, the, 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 I mean, I could, I could say dr draconian response mm. to the COVID situation, and I say draconian. I, I yeah. say that freely because our own prime minister, who's a conservative, said that in the, in the newspapers. He termed it, you know, we may have to go to these draconian measures. Mm -hmm. um, I think that shocked a lot of people. And, you know, our membership has exploded because we are one of the few minor parties that are, were, were really pushing back against against all this, this COVID um, alarmism, we, we call it now, in mm -hmm. our handbook. So, 
yeah, that, it is. It is really disappointing to to, he, to see the the conservative part of Australian politics really become pretty pretty radical in that way. Um, L- Labor's on the left are definitely worse. I, I think it's probably similar to in America. You've got um, each state doing their own thing in in parts. So the real the, the left leaning one like the the biggest one was victoria or melbourne they were locked down for i I think it was it was pretty close to a year um yeah so yeah i'm from from new york over here so you know i could kind of relate to that uh maybe not as extreme as what was going on in australia uh, but certainly it was extreme uh relative to the other parts of, of the country over here so Give us a little more insight there. Give me a little bit more insight with regards to the scene in Australia. So are the the people, the general population, were, were they as shocked as the outsiders as to what was going on or were a lot of them aligned with the policies? It sounds like the, you know, my, under, my, my very, you know, um, superficial understanding of all this was that Australia's reaction was very similar to to that of Canada's uh, and seems to be kind of similar politically. Do you mind giving me some insight into that? Uh, Yeah, I I mean, I think it it really has divided the community. Um, There there are definitely a a large or large-ish amount of the population that have woken up and and I'm pretty optimistic about that. I think that's really good news. I think that will help us in this election. Um, but you definitely have, um, I mean, at least initially, even in Melbourne, I would say the majority of people appreciating, you know, this this lockdown. We've got a really large, um, you know, management um, laptop class you could call it in especially in Melbourne that are pretty happy to just be locked in their home you know you know and they believe there's a I mean there is a genuine threat um, threat there and um, but they probably appreciated being at home and didn't really appreciate what a lot of the small businesses um, the, the tradies uh, what they were going through through all that um, which is really sad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, our you mentioned I think eighteen percent of the population is into crypto. Do do you think there was any uptick there? Uh, at, you uh, know, in response to the draconian measures that were taken. I mean, in Canada, I don't know if you follow if you follow that at all. The trucker rallies that that took place and. Um, and as part of that, uh, people started using crypto to essentially make donations to the truckers because uh, traditional banking was essentially blocked and shut down and censored. Uh, so there was there was a moment there where kind of the the general population woke up to the importance of crypto. Was there any kind of moment like that in Australia in, in reaction to the draconian measures that, that were taking place there? Yeah, look, I. I... I don't actually, I'd, I'd love to say yes. I think probably most of it isn't um, because of, you know, any sort of genuine need for it. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, there, there certainly is is some, but I, like I chat to just people at work and that sort of thing, they're, they're, like they're, there's a group of people at work that have have gone onto an exchange and bought crypto, but a, a lot of them, I, I don't think they know where the utility is there. So I think probably the majority of it is, I mean, I don't know where you sit, but I, I sort of see a, um, at the moment, at least, the vast majority of the crypto community, you know, they that, they probably just see it as a number goes up, sort of mm. how much fiat can I get out of it later on? They don't sort of think about the, you know, the peer-to-peer nature of um, a, a, a crypto economy, how that's really what is needed for a, you know, a lasting um uh, you know, helpful tool, I suppose, for the world, you know, to remove volatility, vot- 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 mm-hmm. um, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know. I suppose I, I just saw it as an opportunity. I um, I also have been doing uh, some training. So 
in Australia, we have in uh, a lot of industry um, bodies, like they call them the Chamber of Commerce. Each town will have one, a state might have one, and they're just private groups. Uh, and the one in my local area, I have been doing training with them. And, you know, I, I sort of, I, I, I did. I do see a real need, I suppose, to to see the businesses starting to adopt it, um, to accept it. Um, so that's sort of my area, I suppose, my uh, training, I guess. Um, we we also have a really big um, community in Townsville. Um, this is not on the Monero side, but on the Bitcoin Cash side, they have a lot. That, I would say it's a it's a good example of. A, a local economy. I think they have about 130 now local businesses. They've got a sticker on their door and um, there seems to be quite a lot of trade happening there. So there's small pockets like that. Um, but Interesting. Bitcoin so Cash, not not Bitcoin, traditional Bitcoin uh, using Lightning Network, but Bitcoin Cash. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah a few... that seems to be, uh, you know, what's what's happening, right? Anywhere where like it's it's actually being used, uh, I see. It seems like Bitcoin Cash seems to be being used more, uh, and then Monero seems to pop up in these areas where Bitcoin Cash is grabbing hold. Uh, that's that's my anecdotal, uh, you know, uh, observation. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I, and I guess that's where when I saw this, um, you know, yeah, it's just I can sort of see this barrier of you know capital gains tax, and um, I, I think a lot of people are probably holding out for you know sadly um, for the government to. to sort yeah, well, of... I mean that, that's that's one of the things that you know that starts to lead them to something like Monero, right? Because it is more cash like, uh, so it allows you to transact without anybody really knowing uh how much when and to who um so that's that's there's a saying that all roads lead to monero so once people actually start <laughs> using it and dealing with it and realizing the attack vectors and what what the state may do in response they slowly uh make their way in, into monero out of, out of a out of a true need is there is there a large culture of traditional cash usage in Australia or has everybody kind of moved away and already just, you know, using their, their credit cards and Venmo and things like that? Uh, so I'm in rural Tasmania in, um, in a place it's Olveston or Devonport. We, the cash is definitely used a lot still. And I didn't notice a big difference through the pandemic you know like a lot of people are saying that was not hygienic that sort of thing um when you go to the cities though definitely uh cards are used heaps more for sure people are much more comfortable and and prefer that i think probably because of because of the pandemic mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. yeah so what, what do you think of these arguments that are made you know those that 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 really believe in Monero, uh, you know, believe in it because they think there's this need for a true digital cash utility uh, that's not controlled by any government or corporation because there's this belief that, you know, traditional cash is slowly disappearing and we, we need a replacement, something that we know that we can rely on as a, as a you know, as, as, as a society. Uh, for the purposes of maintaining free and open societies by allowing people to transact freely with this new digital cash. Um, what's your... Yeah, I mean, I, my personal, like, I, I'm very optimistic of it. You know, I, I think it, the, the whole thing that it, if it's if it's gold, but that you can take custody of it, that's pretty pretty economically, socially um you know new it's a completely new thing that we've never had before it's an amazing invention and i can't see how the world is going to go back uh to the other you know how about, how about the the cash like elements right so you're running for office so uh you know 
you may be critics criticized and people may say, Hey, yeah, uh, Monero, Monero sounds great in theory, but aren't you concerned that it can be used, you know, in nefarious ways? I mean, it's, it's, it's cash. So we, we, you know, uh, the government won't be able to track and trace the transactions. You know, people can use it to fund terrorism. It can be used, you know, for any number of things. What's your yeah. political. Yeah. 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 I see. Philosophical response so, to that. I mean, I, like, I, I guess I, I mean, our consistent philosophy as a party and, and what I just value as well would be that I, I, I just don't think that the state should have that control. I would rather, you know, a, a society where the politicians have to, I guess, just like a business, right, they have to provide the value um to be able to do things like um uh you know denial of a service is is much better than putting someone in jail if they don't pay their tax that sort of thing i i think it's just a generally healthy thing that the the politicians don't control that because if i if i'm in power you know great, I might do some good things while I'm in office, but my time will expire. I, you know, I don't know who's going to be there. So it's, it, it, I just think it that that's what needs, what, what I value. Um, as far as criminals, like I, I think using something like Monero, uh, yeah, it's, it is, it, it's a given if it's going to be used, if it's going to be cash, like you say, that's, that's always going to happen. But I don't think we can uh, demonize you know the, the the tool there i mean criminals are always going to find ways to circumvent laws and you know at the moment there is cash uh you know standard cash now that they that they can use and we can't we can't we just can't police the world you know effectively in that way i suppose um so you know that's fairly consistent with my with my personal values i suppose but also as a politician i I think that's a good thing. Great. No, I'd love, encourage love, love you. Know, I, <laughs> I um I haven't mentioned it yet, so I should. But so f for this political campaign, part of when I saw this policy classifying it as currency, I did make a YouTube video just as a pitch. Really, not a, a small. I think it goes for about a minute and a half. Pitch to the the Aussie crypto community mm -hmm. that's just really shareable. Um, you don't you don't have to be like a um, an ha hardcore libertarian or anything like that, but just you know, look, we we just want to remove tax, so it's just treated fairly like any like our currency. That's right, um, yeah, like the Australian dollar. Um, we don't want to force people to use digital cash. That that would not be um or, or monero or bitcoin right. or anything yeah. like that that's yeah. not what we're about that's not like el salvador right that's, there. So yeah important. great example yeah. yeah yeah we'd much rather businesses you know slowly well they don't have to do it slowly but i think it's more likely that over time as people learn how to use it um learn a few times that you shouldn't lose your seed phrase that sort of thing that they might start to trust it more and over time uh, you know, it can be a smooth transition into into what what people want, I suppose. You know, and there might there may always be uh, different currencies there, like um, for different purposes. You know, may, maybe um, yeah, when when people need the privacy, they they're going to Monero, and if if uh, a charity wants to be more transparent, you know, maybe they they choose something different. Sure. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and like any other technology, right? Uh, you know, I I could use Signal or I could use WhatsApp. Well, wh money is just a technology as well, right? For transferring mm. value. So why why shouldn't I have the ability or, or be allowed to to ch freely choose which type of money I want to use? Yeah. Yeah. Ab absolutely. Get great. Great to hear these things. So, what kind of response are are you getting? Oh, look, there hasn't been much at the moment. I've posted on a few forums. Um, some people, you know, like it. I, I was actually surprised. I got a bit of criticism from 
some cryptocurrency users on the on the forums. Uh, Criticised about what? Yeah, they didn't. They didn't. Uh, well, I guess they wanted to be taxed. I don't know. No, I, I think that it was actually mostly about our other pol our policies. So, um, I think one was on like um, like we've got Medicare. Um, no, I won't, actually, I won't talk about that. That's um, that's a health system, but that claim that was made wasn't even true. Um, uh, education was one. So, like in our um, uh, in our Freedom Manifesto, we talk about wanting to decentralize education. So, mm. like here, we have a, a a federal education department, um, but they don't actually run any schools. It's the states that run the schools. So, we actually say in our policy handbook we would like to remove the remove that completely abolish it um they do have what's called an, an australian curriculum all the schools have to adhere to that so we're sort of we don't like those things we'd rather give parents more choice we advocate and for the, like the a, crypto a, community, there was those the crypt, people in the crypto community that didn't really like that idea yeah, I think when people hear that first, you know, they they think we are uh, the gut reaction is you're trying to take people's schools away from them. I, I think that's the general idea. Okay. Um, you you want to take funding, so we do have a policy that says we want to remove, um, reduce taxes, uh, get the deficit down. Um, o over time, the debt would need to go down and um. So when people hear that, it's it's confronting, I suppose, to a lot of people. They just hear cutting funds. That must mean you don't value our schools, that, that sort of thing. So that's sort of the pushback I've got. So, you know, I try to just give a small, small little, um, so a few small seeds, like talk about choice and that sort of thing instead, give parents the, the option where they send their kids. Um, it's not it doesn't always work and and that's okay you just sort of leave it at that and what um i, I think we should say i don't think we even said what office is it that you're running for and if you want to explain yeah sure what that office is uh, for people that don't you know know how australian uh, how the australian government works yeah sure i'm um, look I, i'm a newbie so i'm not an expert in even australian politics i'm running for the lower house braddon which means in uh in Australia, you have the House of Representatives and you have the Senate. So I'm in the House of Representatives or lower house, which means there's a small part in Tasmania carved up. That is my area. It's got a few towns in it. And in my election, I'm running against other reps in that area. It's it's extremely hard. How many, for, approximately how many reps are there in the lower house? Uh, in Tasmania, there's five. No, like overall, um, all of Australia. Oh, like uh, no, I don't know. Is it like four hundred um, or? I, no, it's probably more like two hundred. Let me look that up. And um, it's just it's very hard for the House of Representatives to for a minor party to win in the House of Representatives. Um, so, like, you need a majority where we're a we're a minority party. Um, in the district where, you're running in, who's you know what's what are the um, what, are, what are the demographics there in terms of uh, people's political leanings? In Tasmania, we're probably a little bit left leaning in this area right now, and actually in the state, the the Liberals are in, so the Conservatives. It's it's it'll be really close, I think, between um, the Liberal and the Labors. What we're really hopeful. Uh, Liberal Democrats, which we think is is very, um, very possible, is that we win some Senate seats. So, in particular, uh, our Tasmanian Senate candidate, lead candidate, is Topher Field. Um, so he was um, he was one of the he was quite instrumental in the in Victoria the the Melbourne lockdown. So he made a documentary called. Battleground Melbourne. I uh, highly recommend uh, your audience look that up. And it's a, it's it's an hour and a half, but it really it documents uh, a lot. Yeah, the lockdowns probably shows you a lot more than what the media at the time were willing to to show. So he, he's our lead 
um, Senate candidate, and we're pretty hopeful that he will get in. Because he, the way the Senate works, uh, you only have to get a quota for, of votes um, to get elected. So you don't have to get a majority of your area to get to, to win basically so there's a real likelihood that he can get in the senate um and yeah uh block a lot of these draconian rules and you know potentially put some good legislation in cool cool so are are there lots of li um libertarians or liberal democrats running uh in different races throughout australia uh yeah i think we've got 85 in our party now i think that's the late, latest and last federal election we had 13 and our membership has exploded so that's really good news for us um but um we also have a very limited budget so there's even some other you say 85, parties. 85 candidates that are... that's co correct yeah oh, wow. yeah so even um you know like a lot of those won't get in it's it's particularly hard for the lower house like me but um yeah it, it's it just provides i suppose a, a good it, it's certainly good for marketing at least to show that we're willing to put the effort in and um reach out to the community especially you know rural communities like here i can be on the ground i can go to the forums and 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 speak we really see it as a long-term thing as well we think this has woken up you know a lot of the community so if we what we do now, whatever you know, we can do is spreading these ideas of of freedom. You know, we think will pay off in the long term as well. So, so is this your first time running? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, I've never done anything like this. <laughs> this is uh -huh. so, very much out of my comfort zone. And um, yeah. yeah. No, yeah, I, I could sure. totally relate, man. I ran for Congress over here in, in New York for U.S. Congress, which is you know uh, analogous to what what you're doing over there. Um, so what motivated you, man? I know it takes it takes a whole lot of work and a lot, you know, it takes a lot of passion. Where where is that passion coming from? Oh, uh, I mean, I really believe in that. You know, that the philosophy of the party. Uh, I, I I was asked, so I was, you know, I didn't I didn't want to, but I especially when Topher was running in as a Senate candidate and he wanted help. Um, I, I couldn't, I couldn't not, I couldn't say no. Like I, we, we didn't have a huge lockdown here. We had six weeks, but I was keeping up to date with what's happening in Melbourne and the rest of Australia. And it was, you know, there was, it was pretty sad to see the, just the state of, um, of the government, but also I think it's, it's bit, it's quite sad. I would say the, our culture here at the moment i think i think it was a bit sad to see how many people were all for you know locking people in their homes yeah um terrifying you know, right it was more terrifying than than the government yeah. passing these policies was just that everybody went along with it that was the terrifying part mm. yep yeah so it's a small seed now but um We'll see what happens. Do you love coffee and Monero as much as we do? Consider making gratuitous.org your daily cup. Pay with Monero for premium fresh beans. And if you like what you taste, send a digital cash tip directly to the Guatemalan farmers that made it possible. Proceeds help us grow this channel, gratuitous, and Monero. So I think you said you got into crypto around 2017 or something, right? Is that what you said? Or 20? Oh, sorry, 2019. Oh, if I, I might, sorry. if I yeah, said like right 17, before. I did, I did do some blogging 2017. If I, if I said that, and then, yeah, so not, I'm, I'm a newbie still, yeah. So that you were a, lib a liberal Democrat for for years, and then you found your way to crypto separately. Like, did one thing relate to the other? Did, did is that what is that how you found crypto through being part of the the party? Um. Uh, I, no, I've actually, I've not even been a member of Liberal Democrats that long. Uh, I've certainly known them because um, I'd consider myself libertarian. Uh, I think probably what really led me down this path was when I first got a mortgage, actually, for this this home here. I had to, 
um, sort of, I was trying to work out this interest rates thing. Why is it? Yeah. Why is it so low? And why do they change it all the time? How do they do that? Um, and it, you know, it was that that sort of led me into how central bank um, ah, okay. controls interest rates. Sort of hearing, you know, there's a lot of good material out there on the conservative side, and you know that that you know there's some good things, and that was helpful. But um, uh, some parts just didn't really sit right with me. So um, I, that was yeah, that was probably 2016, maybe 15. That I sort of started that journey, and then it was really just this coronavirus. Uh, pandemic that really that motivated me, I suppose, to to say yes. Really, when they were they were asking for for help. And yeah. what uh, what cryptos are you most interested in? Um, not speaking as a, I suppose a, a political candidate. Um, Monero and Bitcoin Cash is is really the only. I, I, I'm fairly agnostic. Like there might, you know, might, perhaps more will come. Yeah, like that's interesting. There's a lot of overlap between the Monero and Bitcoin Cash community, which makes sense. Both are both are really trying to fill that niche of digital cash. Yeah, yeah, yep. I mean, I I, I think that there's a few things that I would say there. I I think the the Bitcoin Cash strengths are the um the entrepreneur spirit, I think. They sort of understand about getting out there, getting your getting your hands dirty, speaking with people, mm. um, being a face to face with people. We do that a and, lot over here, but I, I agree. Bitcoin Cash is good at that. Um Monero community can certainly learn a lot from the Bitcoin Cash community with regards to their their efforts. Yeah, okay. And to be honest, I don't have a criticism of Monero there because I'm I'm just actually no. Not you're in right. I think that you're, community you're spot, much. You're spot on. You're spot on. I'm just talking for myself personally. I, I I'm like the uh, the crazy Bitcoin Cash guy of Monero Land. Uh, I'm yeah. Out, okay. Out. Okay. But uh, we need we need more of me out there, and I think we're starting to see that. We're definitely starting to see that. So wait, wait, when you uh, when you when I asked you which cryptos you qualified it with, uh, not as a can you know not uh, from the standpoint of a candidate. Why is that? What's what's the uh, concern there? Oh, I just don't. I suppose whenever I put my candidate shoes on, <laughs> you know, I'm everything's I'm backwards as... in, in Australia. We say I would say hat in that in that in that instance, and you said shoes. That's interesting. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I I just you know I I don't want to say I don't want to tell people that or hint that I'm potentially going to do an El Salvador. You know, this is the currency. As much as I think Monero yeah. Yeah. and Bitcoin Cash are, are great. Um, it's important that people choose freely. So that that's the only thing. So as a oh, person, yeah. you know, I would I would choose those cryptos. I think they're both great. Um, yeah, just don't want to give people the wrong idea. And and you know, even the corona the coronavirus pushback that um, I think that community is very skeptical. The the normies are of digital cash, they hear about central bank digital currencies. And I think that makes them very nervous. So I wouldn't want to imply to them that we're, we're doing this as much as I believe that that is the future. Got it. Yeah, no, no, no. That makes mm. total... Yeah, you want uh, people to to freely choose their, their crypto. Mm. Um, yeah. Totally agree with that. So was there an avenue that you... you know Was there a road to, to Bitcoin, Cash, and Monero? Was, or did you... When you first got into crypto, you started with those, or did you start as like a traditional BTC maxi and then make your way into other cryptos? What's your crypto story there? I yeah, okay. I don't know if you'd call this maxi. I do remember like looking at a Coinbase listing and thinking, you know, you approach. You, I was approaching crypto to think it's it's like gold. It's just the same thing, really. I didn't really see that 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 additional you know not, uh, custodian or non-custodian element to it so when i saw bitcoin and then i saw bitcoin cash and all these other you know top 10 cryptos 
something in me was a bit annoying. Oh, why do you, why do all these people choose these other coins? That's, wouldn't it just be simpler if everyone just had the same coin and then we could all push back against the government that way or something like that? Yeah. And, you know, there's certainly truth to that. Like, it's not a fun experience trading between the two, I think. And, you know, it, it probably slows down business adoption, confuses people a lot. So it's not that we should, you know, it, it would be helpful to have a, a, a single unit of account. But yeah, I didn't understand why. I didn't understand why people rejected these. And and for a while, I suppose, I I mean, I'm, I'm a computer technician, uh, a system administrator, so I was quite happy. I, I've got to test this out. I've got to try some. So I think I tried a few wallets. Um, there's not a lot of options here in the rural uh, rural Tasmania to to shop in crypto so it was really just testing between two different wallets I think I bought a few things online and I didn't sort of notice that transaction fee initially I suppose um, I think I think the Bitcoin core wallet I think it does I think you can say that it's in Australian dollars but you know it was, it was just too new uh, and I didn't really use it um, Roger Ver was the first one, I suppose, that sort of pointed out the fees are so expensive. And oh, yeah, they are too, aren't they? Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, that that sort of led me down the Bitcoin Cash path, I suppose. I don't know what did it for me for Monero. It's probably just because on the forums, even in Bitcoin Cash, you know, it's like you say, there's a lot of overlap there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think that the privacy of Monero is is something that's critical? You know that that a true cryptocurrency needs to be private by default. Um, yes, I do think it does. Um, I probably just don't know if it's the most important thing. So, like, um, maybe there's the the there could be a trade-off, right? So of something like speed. And in some cases, you're right, you will need that. The, the privacy is super important. Um, you don't think it needs to be it, default? Like th those, uh, the true Monero Easters, you know, like myself, who, who would say, you know, a, a true digital, digital cash currency or digital gold even needs to be private by default so it's so it's fungible so every unit is the same as every other unit is that uh how do, how do you navigate around that logically um i think i suppose I, maybe a good way of saying is it would be great if it could be default um if it didn't come at a cost so and you might be able to help me with this because i'm i'm not an expert i haven't i've only tried monero uh, I'm sure it's a whole lot less than you, but whenever I try, I've tried it, it seems to be more. So I mean, you have to. Um, I I don't know if it, does it do simple payment verification to yeah yeah super super fast. I have videos okay. on yeah, my Twitter. Like I, I get people, you know, like the like the Bitcoin Cash people. I'm out there, so like. I'll be at a restaurant and I'll get the waiter to agree to receive their tip with Monero. Uh, you know, maybe they, they don't even really know anything about crypto and on the spot, I'll get them to download a cake wallet or Monero.com wallet and uh, I'll send them Monero and they get it pretty much instantly, you know? Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And when you do that, can you, if you, if you tip someone, can they then send it to someone else before the next block? Yeah, well, there, yeah. So there is a lock time there from when they receive it. Um, that, yeah, okay, that is true. Uh, but I've never ran into an instance where somebody is then turning around to quickly send their Monero that they just received. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, although I shouldn't say never. Uh, when I'm tipping people, I haven't. But we have this company called Gratuitous where we sell coffee, and I've done it uh, on the on the streets here in New York. Uh, and the idea with the coffee is you can send tips in Monero and it goes to the workers on the farm where the coffee came from. We went down to Guatemala and we oh, get okay. their own cryptocurrency, Monero wallets, paper wallets. So yeah, in those instances, I've had people buy buy coffee 
uh, pay in cash, and then I give them their change in Monero because they don't uh, okay. have any Monero, right? Uh, and then with that Monero, I could say now you can go send the tip. So they have Monero that they could use for tipping. And yeah, that's like, oh, well, you're going to have to wait, you know, a few minutes before you could send that. That is that is a that is a hiccup there with with, with Monero. I agree. Uh, but overall, um, in terms of speed uh, and ability to scale, Monero has it has it figured out pretty well. It's got I don't know if you're familiar with Monero's dynamic block size. Mm. So uh, no, it has it. Yeah. Yeah, so Monero's block size grows with, with usage as more transactions are, are entered into into blocks. The blocks get larger, uh, so it's it's built to scale. And then transactions actually essentially get cheaper over time as as the network is used more, as there's more transactions uh, put into put into blocks. So it's pretty elegantly designed. Um, transactions are are larger. Uh, because of privacy, so it uses things like ring signatures and these other, and basically, yeah, it, it, it's like a heavier. Uh, but the the belief is that you know computing computing power and the internet will scale appropriately with actual usage. So Monero works, you know, pretty much perfectly today as digital cash. You can quickly send transactions. They're super cheap on on chain. Always private, always fungible, and as more people use it, the belief is, you know, our our phones and computers will and and internet bandwidth will scale accordingly. Yeah, that's look, I, quick, I quick overview. Yeah, that, you know, and that's great. I don't, I I agree with all that. I um, and that's why I, I sort of hold both. I'm, you know, I'm not sure which one will ultimately win, and I don't think that needs to be you know like i i think i think maybe there may be there may be a place for both um or maybe not maybe monero will overtake it and and that's fine too i suppose yep Mm. yep just just curious what your uh your fungibility take was or your you know whether you thought things need to be private by default so is yeah and and maybe um just to add to that um you know because bitcoin cash has cash fusion and they've also got um reusable while well, they're putting in reusable payment addresses mm-hmm. it helps a little bit um i would say that's a fair criticism of bitcoin cash that at least not yet it's not um it's not on by default mm-hmm. and I, I would i would look forward to that being the case if it was then i suppose i would say that the usability between the two um, the usefulness, but the utility would be, you know, s- s- similar, I suppose. Yeah, but, yeah. So I think that, I think we, we do need to go a bit further with, with privacy, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, yeah, they would be similar. I guess, yeah, the the main differences at that point would be things like Monero has tail emission and dynamic block size. Uh, Bitcoin Cash doesn't. So the, the real differences would become in terms of scalability and security. Um, but yeah, overall, they'd be pretty, pretty, pretty similar at that point. Is there, what is the best way to get Monero in Australia? Do you know, like, is it, uh, is it easily obtainable? Is it on exchanges? Um, I have a feeling it might not, I, I don't, I don't know uh, Monero too well. So hmm. um, where did I buy mine? I don't think it was an Australian exchange. Okay. I think I might have paid Bitcoin cash with for my Monero, something like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, from memory, so I couldn't tell you. I, I suspect th- there's a lot of regulation here around, similar to the US, around cryptocurrencies. So I don't, I don't think it's available on many exchange. W- w- is that fair to say? Would that be accurate that Monero is not on many exchanges? Yeah, yeah. Gl- um, yep. New York, for example, uh, Monero is not on any centralized KYC AML exchanges here in New York. Um, yeah, okay. There's way you know there's ways to get Monero. It's it's perfectly legal to use Monero. I could go send tips. I could go to the coffee shop and buy my coffee with Monero. If somebody's willing to accept it. Um, you know, I could go peer to peer trade cash for Monero, um, but I can't go on a centralized exchange like Coinbase. 
or Gemini, which are popular in New York, and buy Monero. Uh, the biggest exchange, you know, one of the main KYC AML exchanges in the U.S. is Kraken. I don't know if Crack is Kraken in Australia. I'm sure it is. I don't don't know. I haven't, haven't Kraken, tried it. Kraken's pretty big, and uh, they they ex, you know you could buy Monero with fiat through Kraken. But Kraken's not available in New York, so yeah, I think it, it, it is fair to say there are jurisdictions around the world that have gone out of their way to make it difficult for people to obtain Monero. They must be doing something right, then, hey? Right, right. That's that's that that's you know an indicator for me. If uh, if they if they want to make it difficult for you to get Monero, you have to wonder wonder why, right? So, uh, any anything else you want to throw out to the Monero community? You got you got the stage here. You're you're running for office. Um, do you accept donations in cryptocurrency? Political um, donations. What's what's the situation like with that? No, that would be great if we could. I suspect that would be hard to do with the regulation for political parties I donations. Would, I would think so. Yeah. So yeah. So no, we don't. And to be honest, I I don't know if anyone in the party is into crypto like i am I'm, I'm i think i'm you know maybe the only one or or one of the few so um and I, but you know i don't i don't know everyone in the party we've it, it's membership has exploded that sort of thing so um yeah yep i also probably should mention nick watts i don't know if you have you do you know nick watts i don't think you do i don't think i do um he, he was the one that put me onto your podcast um, okay, said I should reach out to you because he's I like he's the looking guy at... <laughs> What's that? I said I like the guy already. No, oh, okay. So who is he? Yeah, yeah, he's into Monero. So um, he has. He said he's been. I think he's taking the Bitcoin Cash Register into Monero. So that that's open source the Bitcoin Cash Register. So uh, f for your audience, all that does is generate a QR code. It's just for like point of sale. Okay. Or a, uh, um, so you can specify the amount in fiat, mm -hmm. um, $5 for the coffee, and it displays a QR code in Bitcoin Cash and is just monitoring the mempool. And there's a big green light when it's been paid. So it's, it's just super useful for merchants and businesses so it sounds like he's he's adapting it to monero which which sounds uh, great yeah um, tell him to tell him to reach out we could have him on the show as well that sounds uh that's exciting yeah do you guys have anything like that for point of sale um there are people working on things but there's there's no real real good solution yet um yeah okay i mean like i said you know cake wallet you know, I, I use that in my day to day, or Monero.com, which is basically the same thing, but but Monero only. But yeah, that that's just a you know that's a that's a wallet on iPhone and iOS. It's not built into any POS system. Um, oh yeah, there, so this there one are is, ways not... there are ways to do it. There are things, but it's not like super user friendly where people are just easily adding it to their existing POS. I don't think. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. So no, it was. It's not part of um, a POS uh, accounting or anything like that. But it's it's actually just an an Android and iOS app. So it's oh separate. okay okay. It's so quite simple, I suppose. Should yeah. So that if um, if Nick's going to be listening, should I? Because I'm sure he doesn't think it's simple. <laughs> there is also um, no, but it, that could be a, a beautiful solution for 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 yeah for certain things for sure yeah. I also have tested bit bit request. Um, that's that's a similar thing. So that's but it's quite good in that you can turn on and off different currencies. So it's similar in that it's not a actual wallet. All it's doing is generating a, a QR code and then monitoring the mempool. So you can do I know you can do Monero, um, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin, Litecoin. Um, I think it does Nano. A few of those. Mm. big ones so yeah, yeah. We, we were thinking of trying to use something to have something like that for gratuitous so when we send out our our bags of coffee to people that order them so we obviously we allow people to pay monero for their coffee on gratuitous um and we're 
our our current way of receiving is kind of janky actually but there there is some nice uh ways of receiving monero using woocommerce um that you could easily integrate monero payments into it but what i wanted to do was when i send out the coffee to also maybe send out in the form of like a magnet that somebody put on their fridge a qr code where if they send the you know monero to it whatever the cost of the coffee is we would be kind of instantly notified and we would just mm. throw another bag of coffee in the mail so kind of a way to like instant instant order coffee uh but yeah, that, okay. this what what you're talking about would kind of be the perfect solution to that yeah uh, yeah so this one's not like this is for physical a physical presence so like the mm -hmm. cashier would type um, no, I know, but it, manual. the QR code, right? You're sending Monero to an address. And then I imagine on the other side of the app, you're getting notified anytime mm. Monero is sent. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So that would yeah. kind of fit perfectly there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, yep. Uh, let me let me know. Uh, hit me up after the show. Put me in touch with touch with uh, what Nick, did you say his name was? Nick, Nick, Nick Watts. He's Nick his Watt. name. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, we will do. All right, man. Yeah, he's uh, in Australia too. Oh, very cool. So, is there? Could you? Would you say, or could you possibly say, is there a Monero scene there? Are there like any meetups going on that you know of in Australia? I mean, we've we've had a, a number of people from Australia on this show. Uh, people oh, okay. that are working on different things relevant to Monero. I think the some of the one of the atomic yeah the Comet project for atomics. Uh, atomic swaps for Bitcoin to Monero. I think it was the okay. one. Is there uh, some of those guys are located in Australia? Uh, I could be incorrect, but I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, and there's there's some other folks I've spoken to that have been located down there. So, do you okay. know there? No, I'm afraid I don't. I only, I only know Nick. Um, okay. Yeah, so he, and he, yeah, so he's a developer um, and a writer actually. Um, okay. One of his books. So that. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll tell him to reach out. So I'm sure I'd love to come on. Start a Monero meetup down there. Mm. <laughs> no? Sounds good. <laughs> so you got too much on your plate right now. You're running for office. How oh, is, yeah. So it's, how has it been? Um, How's it been overall running for office? What's your experience been thus far? I, I mean, it's certainly out of my comfort zone. I'd, I'd rather just... Um, yeah, sit in a corner and do my own thing, but um, I can't do that anymore. People keep bothering me with all sorts of rules and regulations. So, um, yeah, I, I've probably had um, four to five interviews in the community. You know, uh, the the ABC we have a the Australian Broadcasting Commission. That's it's uh, state sponsored media really left leaning so i've been on that that was that was good that was interesting oh wow so you must be doing something right you're getting uh the oh, so, so they just opened it up to all the candidates so okay they didn't pick me out especially uh but that's you know that's good that they do that they give a lot of more a lot more time to them the major parties sure um, but to be fair i think they you know that that's what most people are gunning for and it's Certainly in this area, it's it's probably most likely that those guys will win. Um, so yeah, it's it's not it's not it's very busy. I'm also full time working at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, it's it's been pretty crazy few weeks. Looking forward to Saturday ending, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, it, it's it's probably good for me as well. I think it stretches me. It's a good good life experience. Um, getting out there in the community more. Um, but I am looking forward to you know finishing and I'll I'll um yeah plug back into the chamber of commerce. I'll, I'd like to get a, a bit more crypto adoption here, and um yeah even like with that I'm fairly agnostic with the crypto, so I might have to check out Monero a little bit more and see yeah. how quickly I can do it. Do I have used I have used Cake Wallet, so um okay that that's what you would say. That's your go to. Do you think? Yeah, that's definitely my go-to. I mean, they they also sponsor this show, but uh, I, I <laughs> they, no, they 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 are just you know the the best the best smartphone wallet. You know, they've 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 done it right. They've done it right from day one. I know the the, the founder very well. I was one of the first people to, from the community to reach out to him when he came out of nowhere and launched the Monero IS wallet. Uh, and kind of from day one, he's I, I think he's always done things right. He's been very 
uh, open to the, any concerns that the community has and trying to keep it, you know, a very pure uh, wallet that, you know, aligns with the values of Monero. And he always kind of pivots towards that. So it's, it's, it's nice to say, um, you know, you hold your own keys, all that jazz. It's, it's just a good, good wallet. Good wallet. Good yeah. Okay. Wallet. Yep. Um, cool. And yeah, I would say, you know, if, if you're, you know, uh, gonna gonna be trying to grow adoption over there. Please, uh, you know, report back. Uh, jump into the Monero subreddit if you have any, you know, looking for resources or help. I'm sure there, there's those that would would try to help you with those efforts. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Will do. Sounds good. Cool, man. Thank you, Duncan. Thanks for for jumping on. This was this was this was um, a learning experience for me. I like I said, I, I didn't really know much about the Australian uh, political scene, so. Uh, I appreciate this. This is fun. Oh, Doug, absolutely my pleasure. Yeah, and um, yeah, especially thank you. It was just so last, last minute last week and I'm sure you're busy too. So um, yeah, my, my pleasure. Where can people learn more about you and follow you and support your campaign? Um, ldp.org.au is, is probably best, yeah, for Aussies. So... Um, and the, you can click on Freedom Manifesto there and read about all our policies. That's that's probably, you know, a good starting point. My bio is in there um, and everything that the, the party believes in. So, yeah, ldp.org.au. So l- last question, just to kind of round it off. What do you think the future looks like for Monero in particular in Australia? Do you think we get to a day where it's used widely uh or or just say, let's just say digital cash um and to a point where the government there basically does treat it like a currency and they, and they don't tax it for capital gains purposes you think that's that's pie in the sky or do you think there's actually you know a possibility that that happens in australia uh, i mean i i think yeah i would say digital cash is inevitable eventually i think it will be i think people will be using it lots in 10 years and i can't see it in in 50 years i i can't see the world functioning you know in in the way that it is like the the amount of money printing inflation that's happening uh is it's just not sustainable um one of my blogs also early on um, was I, I wrote a, um, uh, an essay called The Addictive Cost of Technology. And I actually pitched it at, um, it was pitched at Normies and it explains that, yes, like w- we often talk about um, money printing inflation causing CPI to increase, um, the cost of living. But the focus of that essay was, also the reverse that it makes us more dependent on uh, technology which sounds weird so especially when you consider if a digital cash world can potentially make us less dependent um, I don't want to get too down in the weeds because it's in case you want to end the show but uh, oh, go ahead go ahead basically um, what it's saying in this essay is that, because the the cost of living is increasing we uh, businesses right don't have to when their 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 supply cost is going up they don't have to pass that on to the consumer they could instead reduce the quality of their product Mm -hmm. so um they might put less chips in the chip packet or you know make their their cans a little bit smaller something like that um, or they might be, you know, they might be a plumber and they get some sort of technology solution to do their accounting more efficient, something like that. And that happens in business, you know, in millions of transactions, millions of um, efficiencies in an economy all the time. We're trying to make things more efficient. Me as a technology provider, I'm continually doing that, trying to reduce costs. Mm-hmm. So in this essay, all I'm saying is, well, that that cost, that that improvement can negate 
that inflation. So um, sometimes economists like um, Keynesians or neoclassical economists might say, oh, look, we're printing all this money and we, we're not seeing CPI increase much, although now it's, it is. Um, so that sort of explains why there's potentially, uh, it, it, uh, in a big way, inflation is also just generally making life harder. Um, it's, it's generally making us more dependent on technology, on improvement, on keeping up with the latest gadgets, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, we're, so in a big way, you know, like I, I, I don't think, I don't think that can continue on. So to sort of get back to, to your question, I think, you know, there's, there's a movement of people rejecting technology even, uh, and it's ironic to me and inevitable that eventually when we can be on an, a sound, you know, digital cash um, system, that's going to, to just generally make life a lot easier. So, yeah, for me, you know, it is inevitable, um, but it might take people a lot, a lot of time to, to you know, to see the value. And um, I suppose I, I just hope that I can just do a small part in, in helping people on that journey. Yeah, yeah, great, great, great point. Yeah, taking people off the the fiat, you know, out of the fiat rat race, so to speak, right? Uh, the hamster wheel. Um, mm-hmm. I guess I will ask one more question too, because we didn't cover it. the central bank digital currencies. Is there any? Do you have any opinion there, and any insight into whether or not Australia is? I'm sure they are pursuing, but you know where where they're currently at with that, and how that might affect things. Yeah, I mean, I, I personally um, hate the idea. <laughs> um, I guess I think I think the ANZ Bank have spoken about doing their own um, blockchain on the Australian dollar. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure how where they are about that. Um, yeah, and I, I suspect I think you're probably right. I think Australians, the, the government probably will try it. Like like a lot of places, that seems to be their mindset. Um, they are talking about trying to implement um, digital ID um, requirements, and that's sort of pretty alarming. We, we've we've got a policy on that that we're that's everything we're against. So that we want to push push back against those sort of laws. Um, so I think it will come. I guess I, as much as I hate it, I think it will be. I don't think it's going to kill crypto um i think really it's probably only going to help in that catalyst as much as i don't like it if people if people are forced onto it to accept it it's a pretty small bridge then to go over to crypto Mm -hmm. and you know they they're going to do the same inflationary policies on a central bank digital currency anyway all that does is make those systems closer and more accountable right the the more they keep printing the more the better crypto looks right so they're stuck between a rock and a hard place i suppose is is my perspective on what happens in our society um but yeah I, ultimately i i i would oppose any sort of forcing people onto a digital um, bank currency um if they provide it as an option you know to me it's much the same it doesn't doesn't matter too much if it's digital i suppose but you know as you probably know is when it's digital it's it's often means surveillance so it's it's probably more what it's about Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so yeah me personally i wouldn't touch it (laughs) all right well we'll end on that thank you so much duncan greatly appreciate you taking the time oh thank you My pleasure. Good luck on your campaign. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode. We release new episodes every week. You can find and subscribe to our show on YouTube, Odyssey, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Go to monerotalk.live to subscribe for a full list of places where you can watch and listen. If you want to interact with us, guests, or other podcast listeners, you can follow us on Twitter. And please leave us a review on iTunes. It helps people find the show and we are always happy to read them. So thanks so much and we look forward to being back next week.